In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about what I think could be done to fix Cyberpunk 2077. I don't think the game is ever going to be exactly what I wanted or a lot of people wanted, but I do think there are things they can do to improve the game so it's much closer to that experience. The first thing on my list is, of course, bugs. This personally wasn't a huge deal for me. There are a lot of bugs in this game. It's probably one of the buggiest games I have played. But for some reason, that just didn't really ruin the experience for me. But I totally understand that it would ruin it for a lot of people. It wrecks the immersion, and I totally get that. So that's first on the list. They got to get rid of the bugs. I know they've been working hard on this. This is something I expect to be ironed out over the next couple months. So I think this is something they can absolutely eliminate over time. The next issue they need to work on, obviously, is performance on last-gen consoles. This is PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The performance on these consoles is terrible. They somehow have to, you know, recalibrate or whatever they need to do with their current build of the game on these consoles and fix it. Uh, if you look at Ghost of Tsushima, it was able to run very, very well, very, very pretty looking game on that console PlayStation 4. So I know they can do this. They need to spend the time to do it, though. Not because it's going to make them a lot of money, because it's the right thing to do, and because they told people it would run on that console. The next thing I think they should do, this is more not about fixing the game, but just fixing their uh, image or PR, if you will, uh, is I know that they're coming out with DLC for the game. I think they should release at least the first DLC free to everyone. I think this would be a sign of goodwill from CD Projekt Red saying, hey, we own it, we fucked up, we're going to give you guys this DLC because we know it, and we want to make this the best possible experience, and we're going to do whatever we can to do it. I think that would go a long way. It's a sign of goodwill. I think this is something they should absolutely do. Talking more about the actual mechanics of the game and what I would do there, because the game itself has some issues with it. I think the first issue is that balancing is extremely off. Even on the hardest difficulty of the game, you can hit for so much damage that there is absolutely no challenge. I mean, you look on YouTube, there's builds saying like 3 million damage or 4 million damage or whatever, however much DPS. And I myself have made builds that, you know, you can just basically one tap everyone on the screen in about five seconds. So there needs to be some rebalancing done here, either in the terms of passives or the way weapons damage is scaling. Um, or even, you know, just taking a look at, you know, maybe adding a harder difficulty, one that makes it so that it's just not so easy. I'm not exactly sure what the answer is there. They really need to look through that, and it really needs rebalancing in some way. Now, part of that rebalancing, obviously, is better AI. The AI of the game is absolutely atrocious. And honestly, I they get a pass from me on this because just about any game where you're, you know, playing open world where you come upon a pack of enemies and you face them, the AI is usually bad. You look at Watch Dogs, it's bad. You look at Assassin's Creed, it's bad. Um, any of these sort of games, the AI is usually bad. However, I do think because we're talking about a game where combat is such a huge part of it, they really need to make it better than it is. Um, I don't think it's quite as bad in those games I mentioned as it is in this game. So they need to do something here to make AI more engaging, whether it's the tactics the AI use, whether they flank you, whether enemies are you know attacking or using more abilities. This kind of goes along with the difficulty. This is obviously going to ramp up the difficulty if the AI is improved. So they need to factor that into the rebalancing equation, but they absolutely need better AI. Taking a look at the weapons of the game, I think this is one area that is probably they absolutely nailed it. I really love the weapon types of the game. They all look and feel different. They all play differently. I wish there were more. I wish there were more weapon types with bigger differences or more differences so that you could have more variety. Even Like there's a good amount of variety in the game, but I think this would be great. And obviously this could be implemented with the DLC or, or however they want to do it, but they definitely need to not stop here and they need to keep adding more weapon types and, you know, even if they add new skill trees that they slot into existing attributes for these weapon types, I absolutely think they should add more weapon types to the game. I think it would make for a very, very cool experience. Piggybacking off that a little bit, I think they should add more cyberware as well. I think cyberware, I think most people would agree, the cyberware is probably the most interesting aspect of character customization in the game. It provides the most change in gameplay to your style of gameplay and the most noticeable difference in gameplay because you can slow time or you're gain health all of a sudden, or you can jump really high or shoot rockets or what have you. It provides the most customization you're going to see in your character because everything else is really done passively. I would love to see them add more cyberware so that this spectrum of different things you can do just becomes broader and broader and you feel like there's a lot more things you can do. Cyberware is just one of those things that's so unique to Cyberpunk 2077. I think it would be a crying shame if they just didn't add tons more of it and allow you to do some really spectacular things like maybe hover in the air or maybe guide your rockets if you fire them or maybe you can see through walls like more clearly exactly where enemies are maybe lock onto several enemies at once and like fire shots that go out at the same time i don't know there's a lot of things they can do here 
clearly Cyberpunk, you know, the CD Projekt Red has been very creative in the things they've added. I know they can add more here. I would love to see them add that. And piggybacking on top of the cyberware, I would love to see more quick hacks as well. There are, you know, a good amount of quick hacks in the game, but I feel like you only really need to use about three or four of them. I would love to see, and these need rebalancing too, because some of them are stupidly broken. But I would love to see more variety on things you can do, um, whether it's damaging effects or, you know, crowd controlling effects, or maybe just some crazy stuff altogether. Um, I, I really think they could go, you know, nuts here and add a lot more quick hacks that would change the game especially with the legendary ones that have passive effects. Let's see some more passive effects that you can build around and really make, you know, different character builds based on those passive effects. And, you know, don't make them so powerful like some of the ones we have now, like, you know, factor the balancing into the game, but it would be great if you could make builds around specific legendary quick hacks, um, kind of like short circuit, but, you know, maybe a bit different. I would love to see them add that into the game. I think it would add more variety. Now, one thing I really haven't talked about that's probably one of the biggest issues for me about the game is you know, the fact that it just feels like you don't have a lot of choice in the game. It feels like you're sort of pigeonholed into your dialogue response and it doesn't really matter ultimately where things go. I don't think this is something they can fix about the game. It's not something I have on my list of things to change to make the game better because frankly, it would be a whole rewrite, a whole, you know, new coding of scenes and scripts. And you're basically taking like, you would need to add like half a game to fix that issue or a quarter of a game. And so I don't have that on my list. I just don't think that's something they can fix without really giving the game a huge overhaul that would take years, and so I don't have that. It's something, of course, I would think that would make the game better, but I don't think it's something that they can reasonably fix the way things are, so that particular part of the game, part of the game that really would have made the game, like, amazing to me, is probably never going to change. But I think if they do some of the things I mentioned, or a lot of the things I mentioned, it will still be a much better experience than it was at launch or is now. And I think it would be, you know, much, much higher on my list in terms of games that came out last year. The last thing I would love to see added to the game is flying cars. Why the fuck not? I mean, you get so many cars in the game that you can drive around and they're all amazing, but why not a flying car? We know they exist in the, you know, world of Cyberpunk 2077. Let's be able to get one. I mean, lock it behind some hidden achievement or some hidden quest line or whatever you want. But can you imagine driving around Night City in a flying car and just seeing the whole thing? It would be amazing. And I absolutely would love that. Add a flying car to the game. Let's do it. Anyway, that basically wraps up, you know, what I think they could do to fix Cyberpunk 2077. It's not going to make the game perfect. It's not going to make it flawless, but I think it would, you know, handle a lot of the issues that players are having. Even if it doesn't tick off my own bucket list for things I would like to see, it handles a lot of them. And I think the game would be, you know, very, very good if they could do those things. Coming up on the channel, we're going to be doing some Monster Hunter Rise coverage. So if you guys are fans of Monster Hunter and want to check out the new Nintendo Switch game, we're going to have that coming soon. I can't say exactly when, but we're gonna have uh, an impressions video up fairly soon about what we think about that. So stay tuned for that.